day there viewers my name is Cliff I'm a gem cutter from Australia and welcome to my channel called Vintage Time for all my regular subscribers and viewers I'm certainly glad that you can join us again and for anyone new who's joining or watching my channel for the first time it's a pleasure that you can watch the process of how gemstones are cut in today's episode of how to cut gemstones I'll be featuring moissanite which is usually a lab grown gemstone but it also occurs in nature so what is moissanite moissanite is a mineral which was discovered by Henry Moisson while examining rock samples from a meteor crater located in Canyon Diablo Arizona back in 1893 initially at first he identified the crystals as diamonds but later in 1904 he identified the crystals as being silicon carbide due to moissanite's rarity in nature most moissanite these days is lab grown moissanite was initially introduced to the jewelry market in 1998 by a company known as C Free Inc which is more commonly known as Charles and Colbard they were the first company to receive the patents to create the market lab grown silicon carbide gemstones which was trademarked under the name forever one forever brilliant and forever classic these days moissanite is lab created all over the world in countries such as china india or russia with a Mohs hardness of 9.5 it exceeds the hardness of most other natural gems it also has a refractive index of 2.65 which is a little higher than diamond so these days moissanite is regarded as a great diamond alternative So the initial preparation is now complete where I've glued the gem to a brass stop stick and I've allowed it to set within a transfer jig overnight. The following day the dop stick is placed within the quill of the faceting machine and now I'm ready to start faceting the pavilion. Here is the design I intend to facet which is an emerald cut design and I thought it suited the shape of the moissanite. So with most rectangular designs or even with squares the first four facets are cut to a temporary center point and later on you'll be cutting more facets and that center point will be removed. I need to say that with this particular piece of moissanite I did buy it cheap it comes from India it's not as bright or brilliant as you would expect to be a white moissanite it's quite brown and yellowish in color but it does have impairments and I do feel that I'll strike some issues as I'm faceting this gem. This is my first time I've ever faceted moissanite so I thought I would buy a cheaper piece and just see how I go. For a synthetic gem moissanite is relatively expensive. The higher quality moissanite is around about one tenth of the price of diamond. So as you can see my moissanite is not of the highest quality you can see all the imperfections in this piece of moissanite and I've polished one face because I need to test out how this material polishes 
and it's a bit of a devil to polish very easy to cut it seems fairly soft a, bit, a little bit like topaz but polishing is another issue I'll explain that a bit later on I've reset the protractor because I'll be cutting another set of pavilion facets and I've decided to use a 1200 grit instead of the 800 because it cuts fairly fast The second set of pavilion facets have been completed and as you can see on the surface of the gem there's a little bit of debris emerging from within the interior of the stone so hopefully I can remove some of this but doing that means there's going to be compromises and here you can see that I've completed the third set and then there'll be several other sets as I move along through the pavilion facets. So all the main pavilion facets have been completed and during the entire process I've only used a 1200 grit disc. Now I'm on to faceting the girdle outline still using a 1200 grit diamond disc and I've got the protractor angle set at 90 degrees. Faceting moissanite feels very much like when you're faceting topaz. It has a softer feel on the lap, not quite as abrasive as cubic zirconia or quartz. So the girdle outline has been complete and it becomes a little bit more obvious now when you see some of these imperfections. But I'll just keep moving on and see what happens. Four more opposing facets have been cut that meets up with the girdle outline creating the v-shape that meets the coulette so here's a little trick when you're cutting those real tiny micro facets and you do not want to overcut when the machine's running get out a black highlighter pen and highlight the area that you want to facet so the next step is to get a very fine diamond plated disc, a 3000 pre-polish or 1200 grit disc which is very worn will do the trick. Make sure you wet the disc properly. You are not going to be running the machine via the motor. Select your correct index number of course and have the protractor angle set at the correct angle that you wish to facet this little facet. So you'll lower the mast and gently swipe manually across the disc a couple of times. So as you can see with two little swipes with no motor running we've cut the tiny facet and you can see where it's removed the ink from the highlighter on the surface of the gem. So I'm ready to polish the pavilion and I've read that polishing moissanite can be tricky as you need to be very precise in all the phases of the pre-polish. It's for understanding of the use of these various oils on these porous white metal laps that has a huge bearing on the way a gem is polished. You'll find that the slickness and dryness of different oils retains the diamond compound in a different way with the Herco valve oil it's very dry and the application needs to be used more but the tenacity of cutting out scratch is far greater than other oils. In the following scenes you'll get to see all the various facets that have been polished and you also get to see all the imperfections within this particular gem.
I'm ready to start faceting the crown and I've just done the secondary transfer of the dop stick. The original dop stick has been removed and I've glued another dop stick in order that this crown can be faceted. So I'm only going to be adding two steps on this crown and there will be a little bit of cheating I need to do because there were a few compromises in faceting the pavilion so sometimes when that happens you know there's going to be a little bit of misalignment on some of the crown angles but that's what the cheater is there for. So let's get cracking and get this crown cut. For those people who don't know what a cheater is on a fastening machine, it's a little dial or a knob that can do fine micro adjustments. You can use this dial to move a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. These fine micro adjustments, left or to the right, help align facets so they meet correctly. So the first step of the crown has been faceted at an angle of 45 degrees and we've created a girdle outline and the measurement of this gem is 6 millimeters by 8 millimeters. so we're not going to have a really thick girdle. So on to the next stage and we need to cut the second step and we set the protractor angle at 35 degrees and cut the second step of the crown. The second step of the crown is now complete and then we move on to the next step which will be faceting the table and you can see that there are quite a few little imperfections and I'm hoping that when I facet the table I'm not going to cut across too many of those imperfections. So the table facet has been cut and completed and then we go on to polishing the rest of the crown facets using the same method as on the pavilion using a diamond disc on a tin lap using the same oils and it should go fairly quick from now on. So we're getting closer to the end of another video and hopefully the next video, fingers crossed, the material I will be faceting has been gifted to me from a gentleman from the USA so I'd like to thank this man kindly for this wonderful gift and hopefully I do a good job of faceting the material he sent to me. In finishing up stand by for the final reveal as you get to see this gem fully complete and I also would like to say that I wish the quality of this moist night would have been better and I will be looking for a better quality piece because I do want to facet moissanite again. So until next time everybody, take care of yourselves and it's bye for now.